This character is trying to reach the red circle with his right hand, and you can see that he's leaning all over the place to try and reach that. However, if we enable subchains, you'll see that only his arm is moving whilst it's within this range, so you can smash that like button, but then if he tries to reach out of this range, it will engage the rest of the body. So this tries to solve for his lower arm and his upper arm to reach this position. And if that's not possible, because it's too far away, the rest of his body needs to be used to lean and to help out with the movement. So before I show you a trick to improve this further, I'll just show you the basic setup. So we've got a full body RK node with the root set to pelvis. And then the root behavior is set to pin to input. So now the pelvis, which is the root, is pinned in place and cannot move. And now I've set sub iterations to 30. And this gives it 30 iterations to attempt to refine the solve for this subchain, which is just the lower arm and the upper arm. And then the chain depth is set to two. So that's based on the hand R effector. So two bones above that. So that's the lower arm and the upper arm are being affected by this subchain. And if I set this to three, you'll see that the shoulder is now being impacted. So this looks a little wacky because the shoulder is moving quite a lot because it's trying to solve for that first. But what we can do is in the bone settings, we could do clavicle R in this case, and we can set the X and Y to limited, and that's limited between zero and zero on the min and max. So now it's only able to rotate on the Z axis. What we could do to further improve this is let's do negative 10 and 10 for the Z axis and then set that to limited as well. And then the sum motion of the shoulder in this subchain solve, but not too much. And you can solve for as many bones as you want and enable subchains for each of them individually. So one thing that we can't do with the full body IK node is affect the elbow position. There's no pole vector option within the full body IK node. But a little trick that we can do is we can chain this after the full body IK node. We can use a basic IK node, which does give you the option of a pole vector. And all we're going to do is take the same control that we're using, that we're targeting for the hand R, and we're going to use the effector item, which is hand R again, plug in this transform so it's targeting the same spot, and then item B is the one up the chain from that, so that's the lower arm R, and then the one above that is the upper arm R. And now you'll see that the arm goes weird, and that's because we've not set the primary and secondary axis. So to figure out the primary and secondary axis, open up the skeleton for this mesh and select one of the arm bones and you'll see that the arm is pointing down the x-axis, but it's opposite the direction of the arrow. So this means it's negative x. So the red axis is x and it's negative x because it's going against that direction. And the secondary axis is essentially the direction that we want to align with the pole vector, which is the elbow. So you can see that's down the y-axis, so it's positive y. So we want negative x, so that's minus one for the primary axis, and we want positive y for the secondary axis. And now you can see that that has solved it, so the arm's not looking weird anymore, but we're not actually using a pole vector here. So I'm going to create a control to use as this pole vector location. So I'm just going to duplicate the control that we're already using for the hand, and I'll rename this to pole underscore r. And because I've duplicated it, it will be in the same place. So I'm just going to move it out of the way. So I'll just move it into some position, which is where the elbow is going to be targeting. I'm going to duplicate this reference to a control, but switch it to the pole R and use that location as the pole vector location. So now we have full control over the position of the elbow, but we're still using the full body IK node solver. So it's still solving first the subchain and then the rest of the body, but we also have control over the elbow position. And at the moment, we've got the chain depth for three, so it's impacting the shoulder. I'll just change that to two, so you can see that it still works. It's still controlling the position of the elbow, whilst getting the benefit of the full body IK node. And you can do this for as many bones or chains as you need. I came across the subchains feature in an article by Kieran Ritchie, and I've linked that in the description. And that's worth checking out because it gives some more details about exactly how this works. So check that out, and thanks for watching.